Most entrepreneurs dream of starting a business and becoming successful. I'd venture a guess that most visitors to the websites like Flippa.com have the same aspiration. Today's guest was in the same boat, but instead of buying a website for a few thousand dollars or tens of thousands of dollars, he spent a quarter of a million dollars on an exact match domain and built a real business. We're going to find out how he did. Stay tuned. I have three short sponsor messages before we get into today's show. First, if you have a great domain name and nothing to show when people visit, you're missing out on potential advertising revenue, leads, and partnership opportunities. NicheWebsites.com can build you a site quickly with a price option to suit any need. But as their tagline says, they don't just build websites, they build businesses. Second, if you're buying or selling a domain name or a portfolio and you want an estimate of its value, Estebot.com is the place to go. Just like you'd visit Zillow.com to get an estimate of a house value, Estebot.com provides key information about the most important statistics so you can make an informed decision based on data. Finally, DNX.com is a domain name exchange that uses a reverse auction platform to provide fair market prices for quality domain names that are manually filtered by an experienced broker. At DNX.com, domain prices drop until someone decides the price is right. But don't wait too long or the domain you love might be purchased by someone else. All three sponsors have a clickable banner in the upper right-hand corner of DomainSherpa.com. Here's your program. Hey, everyone. My name is Michael Seiger, and I'm the publisher of DomainSherpa.com, the website where you come to learn how to become a successful domain name investor and entrepreneur directly from the experts. Most entrepreneurs know of the website called Flippa.com. I've had Dave Slutskin, then general manager of Flippa.com, on Domain Sherpa to talk about domain names being sold on Flippa. I've had a few friends post high-value domain names on Flippa for sale, but none have really had success. And I've never met anyone who bought a high-value domain name on Flippa until today. Joining us today is John Yao, founder of StockPhoto.com. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. And I want to point out that it's um, uh, late afternoon, my time here in Seattle. It's very earlier uh, in the morning, your time in Perth. Close to Perth? Are you in Perth, Australia? In Perth right now, and I'm, I'm probably two espresso short of a decent conversation, Michael. <laughs> well, let me tell you, you're probably going to do a heck of a lot better than me at 8 a.m. So, uh, <laughs> so I give you kudos right off the bat for that. Um, I first that. came across your story, John, uh, when you made a guest post on Flippa.com about your purchase, and, and I was intrigued. So I appreciate you coming on Domain Sherpa and sharing more details of your business as well as an update to your post. So let's start with this. What domain name did you buy on Flippa.com? Um, I bought stockphoto.com um, in an auction on Flippa last December. I think it came online early in December. I think we uh, the auction was supposed to finish um, about Boxing Day last year, and um, I think I, I put the buy, you know, put the buy now through uh, I think Christmas Eve last year, and uh, and the I think the transaction settled um, just after New Year's. So uh, I think the nervous time for me I remember was the uh, was Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Christmas Eve when I actually hit the buy now button, and the New Year's Eve when I actually um, did the bank transfer across to Flipper. Boy, Merry oh. Christmas, huh? Yeah, yeah, so it was a nervous time. I um, uh, I, I didn't know. I mean, I I sort of uh, had in mind, up, you know, you know, we were having a chat prior to the uh, the in this interview, and uh, we we're talking about you know, um, Webmaster Radio and you know the, the heyday of Monty Khan and all those podcasts way back when. I used to love sort of, you know, downloading the podcasts and listening on the commute to work. You know, um, guys like Brian Null and Mark Ostrovsky with Business dot com and all that sort of stuff, and um, and. Uh, I sort of knew, uh, you know, they had one web startup, you know, in me before I sort of uh, died, and uh, I sort of had in mind I was sort of looking something like for for, for a you know uh, a generic domain name, an exact uh, match domain, and um, it was a matter of sort of trying to figure out, you know, what sort of criteria, you know, and um, and when Stock Photo came up, it sort of uh, I wouldn't say it's time, but you know, that end of end of the year sort of where you're a bit more reflective on things, and um, you know. Um, Defining your hopes for the new year and that sort of thing. I, I thought it was uh, maybe it was karma, maybe it was um, you know um, timing, but um, 
it came up and, you know, and, um, you know, a year later, it's, uh, we're on the road and the journey's begun sort of thing. All right. So I've got a few questions. So let me just recap. Uh, December 25th, Christmas, uh, or actually December 24th, Christmas Eve, you decided to put in, uh, to, to become a part of the auction. Was that when you actually clicked the buy it now button or did you yeah. wait for boxing day, which is the day after Christmas? No, the, uh, the the auction was actually scheduled to finish uh, uh, on Boxing Day, oh, okay. um, and I think uh, I think it came online probably early December. It was I think the third time speaking to I think um, uh, John from Blackstar, the, the the vendor. Um, it's it was the second or third time he'd actually listed that domain for sale on Flipper, and um, uh, he um, ha- didn't have much success previously. And uh, I think he lowered his asking price for the bid. I was opening bids and. Um, uh, he obviously had a reserve in mind, um, and it came on. I noticed it. Uh, I think early December. Um, it was open for a few weeks, and um, you know, had a bit of a laugh about it. I saw the buy it now price, and then you know, obviously catch up with a few friends, and so I had to see that auction on Flipper. Uh, Stockbird.com, pretty cool domain name. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very good. How much is it? Yeah. Two fifty. Are you serious? Forget about it. So, um, um, <laughs> you know, it went on. But then, you know, we started. I started thinking about it. I, I, I you know, as I said before, I was looking for. Um, you know, a project to, you know, to, to sort of fill my midlife crisis. And, um, and, uh, stock photo, I was, I knew I was looking for something in the, um, in obviously web related. Uh, I, I liked the fact that it was, um, uh, you know, digital delivery. So you didn't have any sort of physical logistics and distribution to, 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 um, to look after. And so that really sort of left me with, you know, something like, you know, software themes, for example, um, uh, you know, uh, ebooks, uh, any sort of digital content, um, and, and stock photos. I never really thought about stock photos being such a competitive sort of niche. Um, you know, um, having been an end user and purchasing, you know, a lot of these images online, you sort of think, oh, there's a, there's a couple of pretty big players, you know, around here, and, and sort of um, let that let that go and not thought about it too much. And then this auction came on, and um, thought about, it, I thought it really fits the niche, and, and so um, so the next thing was really, you know, the pricing and and um, and that sort of stuff. So, so let me ask good. you about you... that, John. You paid two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for stockphoto.com when most people, I'd say ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people in the world have no understanding about the value of a, an exact match domain name. Why did you feel that two hundred and fifty thousand dollars was a fair price to pay for stockphoto.com? Um, I think the values in the um, the eye of the beholder, you know, the beauties in the eye of the beholder. Um, uh, you value it um, based on um, what you assess to be a reasonable sort of financial um, investment or you know, on financial terms. But also um, on top of that, you know, for me particularly, you know, I'm, my wife and I we were in our forties. Um, um, there was a certain sort of personal um, uh, requirement. You know, it was like I said before. I, I felt there was sort of one web startup in me that, of, of a reasonable scale that I, I needed to do, and uh, so you know that itch was probably worth about two hundred fifty thousand. I figured. So um, no, I mean, like it. it um, you know, like I said before, you know, two hundred fifty. When I first saw the auction, I, that's way beyond my ballpark. Um, I usually, you know, if anything, delve in the uh, the low five figures um, with in terms of the domain names and stuff, uh, and and even those aren't that terribly common and um and so when this came up uh it sort of fitted the bill a bit and i thought well this is something i could really be happy to put my name to um you know a lot of those previous domain names you sort of you know either i'm not a buy and flip sort of kind of guy i, I tend to sort of try and you know build and renovate or buy and renovate so all sort of thing and um, um and um i thought stock photo you know and most of those are quite you know anonymous you do that your name's in the background. You never sort of, you know, uh, are known about it. But I thought, you know, like um, back to that midlife crisis thing. It's this is a, probably a, a canvas that I'd be happy to put my name to. Uh, you know, yeah. whether it fails or whether it sort of does okay, I'm, I'm quite happy to go down with the ship. But you know. so you didn't use any online appraisal tools to try and figure out a fair market value, or or you mentioned, you know, you've been uh, in the domain name related to the domain name industry in a while, and we didn't really chat about it before. But you mentioned. Um, you know, Domain Master Radio, that was quite a few years ago. So you've been associated with domain names in some fashion for a few years. Did you ping some friends that are domain name investors to ask them for their feedback on it? What was your process? Did you just say, I, I think it's a fair price and I'm going to pay it? 
Yeah, um, I guess the um, uh, I didn't ask too many friends because I knew what their answer probably would have been. Uh, it would probably be the same reaction as mine and my wife's actually. So I didn't bother too much about that. Um, in terms of online tools, I'm a I'm a big fan of compete the compete data. Um, yeah. And uh, having been around sort of you know the, the usual forums, you know DN, DNF and uh, uh, and and, um, and and you know couple of the parking companies and stuff, I, I, I kind of sort of had my own sort of reference points and obviously checked them out. I spent a lot of time with the compete data, um, but even then it's just a, it's just a yardstick, you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, still with anything, be it a, you know, $200 domain or a $250,000 domain, it still requires a degree of, uh, of faith and it was a leap of faith in the end that, that you know, a, a sort of hopefully a a well-researched leap of faith, but... Um, and I can't wait to find out. So let me ask you this. Why didn't you consider letting the auction not meet the reserve, which it probably was not going to do since you mentioned that the previous owner of the domain name had listed it a couple of times and it didn't sale? Why didn't you consider not letting it meet the reserve and then contacting the owner directly and saying, hey, let's negotiate. Clearly the domain name's not worth what you think it is. Yeah. There are many ways to that I could have optimized the process, and obviously you, you can't sort of. Um, uh, I think it, with every investment, I mean domains, property, uh, you can't make every dollar in the market. I think if it sort of fits your your budget and it fits your requirements, and if you feel that um, you can sort of still make a decent dollar out of it, um, I think you know I, I tend to be more of a price taker. Uh, then, a, then a sort of, um, I'm, not, I'm not a horse trainer, to be honest. I'm, I'm, that's not my thing. <laughs> Very um, good. So, uh, I, you know, a lot of people would look at this purchase, John, and say, wow, that's a lot of money. I don't have that kind of money lying around. Where where did you and your wife pull together the money from? Was it from savings or? Yeah, this is all self-funded. So no sort of, you know, bank funding. or we To give you a background, I mean, my wife and I, we're in our 40s, um, you know, got a family, a young family, and... Um, you know, we, you know, uh, well, actually, up until a little while ago, my wife used to work and she's sort of retired now and uh, looking after the kids. Um, I, I still consult. Um, you know, we, we've had a decent run. We've, um, you know, done the right things, done the textbook stuff. And, you know, we, we're not, we, we've been reasonably okay. We've done okay and um, managed to sort of screw away a little bit of money. Um, and, um, and so really that, that was also part of the, uh, the due diligence process uh, that I had to go through with the wife. You know, I said to her, you know, we, we're actually doing okay. You know, it, um, you know, this is not a make or break thing for us. It's more of a, you know, like a, you know, a 43. Uh, it's, um, I could go buy a really expensive car that I'd never drive um, and see it depreciate over two years or, you know, um, uh, and we both agreed that, you know, that it was okay. Like uh, if anything, if, even if this thing fails, um, uh, it had hurt, but it would change um, change us, you know, financially. And and one of the prerequisites is that, is that uh, it wouldn't, uh, well, from from my wife's point of view, that if it was actually to work, it wouldn't change our family dynamic too much. It wouldn't change the uh, the amount or the the quality of the time that I spend with my family. So, you know, it, it was a very it was a lot of conditional. <laughs> it was a conditional <laughs> approval, shall I say? Yeah, I, I know how that is. So, you know, most people would look at stockphoto.com and say that is a phenomenal exact match domain. I'm sure, you know, people um, I've noticed love to post comments on uh, sale pages and they'll talk about, oh, great domain. And I didn't go back to look and see if stockphoto.com was archived. But I'm sure people said that phenomenal domain. I went to Google um, uh, keyword planner tool. I typed in stock photo 14,800 searches. In the U.S. alone, at $11 cost per click, 50000 worldwide at a $5.50 cost per click. So, phenomenal exact match domain. When you were looking at purchasing this one, you know, it's right here in front of you. You can see the auction price. You can see the buy it now button. Did you think, should I buy the singular or should I buy the plural? Stockphoto.com or stockphotos.com? What was your thought process at the time? Yeah, stock. I didn't know about stock photos uh, till I think uh, a week after we made contact in December, um, and then it got listed um, on Flipper. And uh, I think I spoke to the, the broker. It was very nice to have a bit of a chat. But from my point of view, I, I um, 
my preference was always on the singular um, because it's in front of you. Um, you can only make decisions based on what's in front of you. There's no use. Uh, you know, I didn't know stock photos, uh, the plural one was, was available or at least uh, up for sale. And, um, you know, I, I could see, you know, the one on Flipper. I could see the compete data. At the end of the day, as a, you know, as well, happy to call myself a domainer. Um, at the end of the day, I, I rely on the compete data. It's, it's the traffic that I, I care about. I, exact match or not um, is one thing, and, and that helps you mitigate risks from a um, value retention point of view. But um, you know, you sort of, I, I sort of give this sort of thing a, you know, say a five-year time frame, and, and I was, you know, came to the crunch and sort of said, um, will this, will I be able to maintain this level of traffic for five years, and if not, build on it? Um, and um, I was obviously happy to, to hit that button based on that. I think I had uh, I had a few I stopped a few messages with uh, John Chapnick, the vendor, you know, in the in the lead in the lead up, and he was very good. You know, we, we um, he was very open. We had a good chat, and um, I just got a you know he he told me he'd uh, obviously shot that name around a little bit. He's actually a more of an end user than a debainer. Uh, had that name since eighty five, so. So I knew it was all legit. It was all above board. He's, you know, runs a very successful business on his own anyway. Um, and so I felt comfortable. And, and um, at the end of the day, you know, it fit the budget. Um, it fit the criteria. Uh, and then, you know, when you, and you when you look down look down a barrel, um, you know, are you able to commit to this for the next five years? And, and um, you obviously try and balance a few more things in your life, uh, not just this, this particular sort of venture. And uh, I thought, you yeah, know, I, I can do this and I'd be happy to do this. You know, rain, hail or shine, I'm sure there'll be a few bumps along the way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, hit the button. Stockphotos.com, the plural, is currently in auction at Flippa, John. You probably know that. It's closing uh, a day and a half from today when we're recording this. Of course, you know, when people are watching it, it will have closed a couple of weeks ago. Um, the current bid is 45000 but the reserve is not met. Are you watching the auction? I'm not. I didn't actually even know. Um, uh, I was joking, um, I think, on, on the uh, on Facebook page, um, the stock photo. Um, you know, I, I don't think my wife would let me anywhere near that domain name. <laughs> I value my marriage too much. <laughs> Excellent. All right, John, you mentioned that you're employed as a consultant. Are you? Were you employed before you bought stockphoto.com, and are you st still currently employed full-time as a consultant? Yeah. I am. I am. I, I love it. It's a you know, it's a great gig. I, I um, it allows me to sort of um, you know see different industries, and you know, I'm very happy doing it. Um, it's got a good work-life balance, uh, and so uh, I'll continue to do that as, as as much as I can, uh, and then have to fit stock photo uh, in somehow. And then hopefully, if uh, if we see some sort of you know traction and and, and growth, uh, I'll deal with that that problem then, and it'd be quite a nice problem to deal with. But uh, yeah, I, I hope to continue consulting. Yeah. So the game plan is. Keep your day job, build stockphoto.com after hours until it's big enough that it supports your lifestyle, and then you'll decide at that point whether you quit your day job and continue with stock photo. Yeah, we, we haven't got a very glamorous lifestyle, so it's not actually hard to support <laughs> <laughs> the three young kids. And, um, and, and, you know, and, 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 and how many kids do you have? Three kids. Yeah, three, three kids. Young kids so so uh, it's nothing too sort of elaborate. We don't, you know, we're not sort of. Too, too fancy or anything, but um, uh, it's actually. I think the um, my wife was very, very careful in stipulating, you know, her the, the conditions of her approval. And I think, um, uh, you know, the main sort of thing was, you know, I understand that you need to get this out of your system, but it shouldn't change what's the mo what's most important in our lives, and that's you know our current situation. That's very, very good, and, and I, I would not want to put that in jeopardy, uh, and so. Um, you know, like I said before, you know, it wouldn't change uh, the quantity and quality of our family time. Um, you know, uh, and also if it, if it wouldn't um, change you as a person, uh, I'm pretty sure that that won't be the case. But if it failed, it wouldn't destroy you, and it wouldn't, um, you know, leave you bitter and twisted, and you, you know, leave you incapable of functioning as a as a as a family person, as a as a, as a husband and a father, and you know, a friend sort of thing. So, um, I think, yeah, it's it's. You know, people look at that that purchase, and obviously they just see the uh, the buy it now price, and, and they, they read the you know the, the flipper post was a little bit sort of um, tongue in cheek, but you know a fair amount of thought's gone into this, and and um, you know we're we're not you know not terribly young anymore, and and you know we're, we're sort of settled. I've seen you know got a few battle scars from from around the place, and um, you know it's it's 
it's very well thought out. I'm sure there'll be stuff that we've missed, but that's okay. And the important, we know what the important stuff is. Yeah. Well, great yeah. criteria that you and your wife discussed prior to this purchase. I think a lot of people are going to get some benefit out of that. And I, I definitely think your wife and my wife are kindred spirits uh, <laughs> along that way. So let me ask you this. You've probably taken a million photographs of your kids. Um, did you have any prior photography or photo sales experience? Or when stockphoto.com came up, did you just look at it as a, a phenomenal opportunity? Like you're an opportunist, there was an opportunity and you took advantage of it. Yeah, I, you know, we've actually, uh, it's a, that's a very salient point is uh, right now we're trying to grow our photographer or contributor base sort of um, one by one, relationship by relationship. And, and my picture to them really is that I'm actually not a photographer. My background is more as an user. Yeah, I, you know, I've had my own websites or domains that I've tried to develop. So I see it from the point of view of of, a, of of an end user. So it's actually up to them to tell me what's a quality photo because um, it's actually my job in terms of stock photo to to be able to market that uh, either more broadly or more efficiently than, than what's currently being done at the moment. Uh, and everything else from a, from the uh, artistry or creative creative part of the, of the world is actually their responsibility and, and I, I wouldn't you know usurp that it's 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 uh, it's their job I wouldn't tell them what to do they're professional so so really that's my job I'm, I'm a marketer so when you saw stockphoto.com for sale why did you think that that was a business worthy of your time. What you know, you mentioned themes or ebooks or a few different electronic goods. You know, you mentioned your criteria for wanting to build a business and and stockphoto.com fit into that. But why did you think that that was the business opportunity that was worthy of your time? Um, that's a hard question. Um, I guess because you know, I, I sort of had had an idea of it had to be a digital product. And you know, it came up, and I, and I think really it it doesn't get more sort of sexy than that. Uh, it's it's um, you know, it came up. I made a decision based on what was in front of me. It fit the criteria. It was you know, a good solid sort of um, uh, a, a, you know, property, and um, I thought the timing was right, both you know, in my life as well as uh, my family and, and my, my my professional sort of life. Uh, and I thought you know, it's. Uh, um, you know, but, but I take your point. If, if, for example, you know, themes.com came up, uh, I would also look at that very, very seriously. Uh, you know, I spoke to, um, uh, I'm not sure you know, the, the ex-owner of, you know, for example, logo, logos.com, and um, uh, I, I would have very much looked at that too um, uh, because that had the criteria. Um, I'm not sure, you know, what prices they would have gone for. So you can only base, you know, you're going to make a decision based on what's in front of you at that time, and a stock photo came up, and, and it did. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's it, when people look at the stock photos, they see exactly what they're getting before they buy, and they can search and they can browse with you know logo companies. It's a service company, you know. Yeah, they're buying a logo, but there's a certain number of revisions that are going to happen before, you know, that from point A to to point Z, and you got to manage that process as well. Where it's, it's much more cut and dry with stock photo. If I go and type in stock photo into uh, as a search phrase into Google. The number one paid advertising at the top is Shutterstock. Are, is Shutterstock the 800-pound gorilla in the marketplace? It's fantastic. It's, uh, it's you know, along with um, .com, uh it's it's just an amazing business. Um, they do very, very well. Um, yeah, they're obviously, you know, uh, uh, an operation would kind of try and emulate, uh, if not take some business away from. But um, uh, it, you know, it, it came up in, a, in, a, in my analysis. You know, obviously, who's in the room? Who are you competing against? Uh, um, they, they've got a, very, a fantastic CEO and founder. Um, you know, he's very, um, uh, you know, he's technically sound. He's got a great business acumen. He's um, very involved. Um, he's he's actually, a, you know, seems like a very nice guy. I swapped a few emails with him subsequent to the um, to to the purchase, and um, I've also you know listened to him in interviews. So uh, you know he's he's um, he's done a few very good things. I think some of the things he shut off stocks done is probably um, commoditized the stock image business, probably to to the despair of some of the uh, photographers around the place. And um, uh, and if you grow that big, I'm sure they don't mean it, but uh, um, people do get treated like a number and. and uh, I thought maybe, you know, that's where stock photo could sort of breach the gap sort of thing. So we, we could sort of build slowly 
um, and, and and figure out our ways. But I guess retain that relationship-based sort of um, approach, um, especially with the photographer. Um, you know, like there is no way, like you said, I'm not being a photographer, I'm not going to be able to provide that that degree of inventory. And so I'm very much reliant on you know guys like Sergey Nivens, um, my, my first contributor, to 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 come up with what's required for for sale. So cool. And I want to ask cool. you about Sergey. Let me ask you first. You know, you you took possession right after the new year, so right after January first, two thousand thirteen. What was you know? And I often uh, get asked this by people: What's the very first thing you should do when you buy a high value domain name? So, what was the very first thing you did, John? Um, I slapped a, a Mailchimp uh, landing page on it um, and um, started taking um, email addresses basically because um, I knew I had probably have to budget for a six months sort of development uh, period. So the domain um, uh, would probably be dormant. And, and, and I thought, oh, what's the most effective way of, of utilizing um, the value? And, and also, from, from my point of view, um, uh, sort of verifying the, the traffic, you know, the quality of the traffic. Um, I, think, I think the first day I got it, I, I put the analytics on as, as, you, as you would. And so you got a feel of, of the traffic coming through, and, and it was good. Um, but until you get someone to do something, you, you don't really know um, how good that that you know traffic is, you know. And, and so we, I put a, a, a sign up page on, and after a few weeks, I put the I refined it to say, okay, well, thanks for your email address, but what exactly are you? Are you a photographer? Are you a, an you know image purchaser, or are you just sort of kicking the tires? I uh, just want to have a look around, and and you know, obviously, not all uh, all visitors will sign up, but the percentage that did were actually kind enough to, to click. Um, it was, I think it was a little checkbook, so you could actually click all three if you wanted. And so uh, I think we collected in the what, four or five month period um, just under 10,000, you know, uh, subscribers. Uh, and most wow, of them actually- 10,000 subscribers? Yeah, so it was good. So it verified for me, it wasn't sort of uh, an old sort of external link to a porn site or something that was coming to stock photos. So they were actually, you know, um, either end users or, you know, photographers and, and potential contributors. So in that four to five months, you said you collected 10,000 subscribers. How much traffic were you receiving when you first, you know, you, you put up this simple landing page that from MailChimp that said, you know, stock photo coming soon. Give me your yeah. email address and tell us a little bit about yourself. Like how much traffic were you receiving? Um, can I keep that secret? Because um, that's actually one of my, my offerings to uh, the photographer at the moment um, because um, I think based on my research and also talking to, to a couple of the contributors like Sergey and stuff, um, a few of the other marketplaces don't provide a whole lot of um, uh, website metrics. So as, a, as an upstream supplier, in this case of, of photos, you, you, know, you, you don't really have a good feel of, well, how many people are coming in? Um, what are they searching for? And where are the gaps? You know, where are they getting fulfilled, and how long is that tail? So, so what I do for, for the photographers after they sign up and we, we onboard them is that we I actually provide a monthly, um, you know, the, the Google Analytics report. So it gives them an idea of the traffic and uh, and the search terms and the search depth and you know the bounce rates and all the, all the key metrics. And uh, it's site wide. It's not just for their images. Um, so I hope that to be a, a bit of a competitive advantage in terms of you know helping you know, build a relationship with my suppliers and so actually, you know, thank you very much for your current quality inventory, but in terms of planning for your future, you know, inventory, here is how it is. And, and um, also it gives them a good idea, you know, that, you know, when you when you lay it bare um, by sending them to Google Analytics, they, they tend to, well, hopefully, um, you know, see you as a bit more of a, a family rather than a just a, a, you know, a business partner. And so hopefully we can sort of uh, build on that. But it's fast to say the traffic was reasonable. Actually, the, the compete data um, that I looked at prior to the purchase, you sort of, you know, you can never know. It's, some, it's, under, it's under, it's over. It's, uh, it's US-based, obviously. And I figured, okay, well, the, the compete data, maybe it's, you know, 50%, 50 50%. And I was quite happy. It, the compete data was actually uh, significantly underestimated what the actual traffic was. Um, so I was very happy with that, and and I think the Mailchimp uh, Mailchimp conversion rates um, uh, and the you know the, the visitor segmentation um, helped me sort of um, feel a better about the purchase in terms of uh, well you know I've got some some quality here in terms of the visitors um, 
I think uh, another metric that was very interesting as the months progressed um, leading up to the launch, um, over 80% uh, of the visitors uh, were new, uh, uniques. Uh, um, and so that was a, that was a sort of a, uh, a constant sort of trend throughout the months and, and even now. Um, and so with, with that in mind, uh, you know, um, it sort of validated, I guess, uh, the, the original sort of hypothesis that, you know, you, you'd want to go into an exact match domain. Uh, the hardest thing about starting a business isn't about coming up with the idea or the product development or it's actually the marketing. It's, you know, um, where, where you, uh, you know, in an offline situation, where, where do you choose to, to set up shop, you know, in the, in the you know, in the city shopping strip where all the, you know, the, the tourists go or do you, do you choose to set up, um, you know, 10 miles out of town in some industrial tractor land? The effort you have to go through in the latter situation is to drum up, you know, um, PR and advertising and get up, uh, you know, educate your market. Um, whereas the guys in, in the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the prime, prime retail CBD, um, he's always going to get traffic coming through and, and um, his problem will be how to convert it. You know, the, the, the other guy will still have the issue of conversion, but he's also got the PR and, and you know, awareness factor to come in. And, you know, if I had to balance all these sort of requirements that my wife had, there was no way I was going to be able to do all the PR and advertising and all that sort of stuff. Um, along the way, you know, because you, and, and so a domain name's good because you, you, you sort of um, uh, pay the premium up front and, and some of the marketing is done for you. It's not done completely for you. You still have to, you know, break a sweat, uh, but uh, you can sort of focus on other things in the lead up to launch. And, and in this period, it's been pretty good. Like we, we you know, the traffic's been consistent um, even through December, which is really only two two weeks. Um and the, the, the percentage recurring is, is much higher. Um, uh, with, I think we had our first recurring client in October, so that was really good. Um, so, yeah, I, I like that. You know, and I said in the Pippa blog, um, you know, the, the exact match domains, so you, you pay a premium, but you wrap up, you, know, you front-end load your, your marketing expense. And so uh, it really, you know, it's a, it's a big figure, and you obviously wouldn't do it every day, but um, where you have opportunity to, it, it actually... You know, you almost outsource or, or pass that responsibility on to, to 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 another part of your company. You don't have to look at that anymore for a little while at least, and and um, or you have to you know worry about it, the logistics of distribution and you know, is the website going to work and the testing and the infrastructure and stuff. And so come come launch day, you know, uh, you have reasonable throughput. And and um, I was so excited. You know, the first purchase we got. You know, um, I think on the third or fourth day of launch, I was so excited because, you know, you see all this traffic and to get the first one, sure, the conversion rate is terrible, obviously, but but it's the first one. And and no PR, no paid search, no, you know, Google ads, no, you know, no, you know, video interviews. No one knows who you are, uh, but they still come. Uh, and so your job is to present them with quality inventory at a, a comparable price. And, and, you know, sit back and hopefully the analytics will tell the rest of the story. Hey, John, you mentioned Compete.com a couple of times. And I've used Compete.com for looking at the traffic that's going to developed websites. Um, I wasn't aware that Compete.com actually measured non-developed websites. Was StockPhoto.com developed before you purchased it off the auction at Flippa? Yes, it was. Um, it, um, John had a reasonably... So he hadn't made it since '85, and um, well, actually, that's not true. He's, he's tried a few things with it, um, but obviously, um, you know, with the advent of cloud and you know, uh, the software as a service, he had sort of explored that. And he even said to me, "Look, after the purchase, you might want to look at that because that's uh, probably an easy way to hit the ground running uh, on your way to helping monetize the site." So, um, so from that point of view. Uh, there was already, you know, Stop Photo was actually, you know, coming up in the search results uh, in Google and had a reasonable sort of um, page depth and stuff. So um, it wasn't, um, yeah, it wasn't all undeveloped. And, and, you know, given the age of the domain name as well, I'm not sure how, how um, you know, how PageRank works nowadays, but, um, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I, I think, you know, I think we were, we were talking uh, private interview and, and when you type in Stop Photo, you know, it actually comes up within the first page. And it's got, you know, in terms of relative inventory uh, compared to Shutterstock and Ice Stock, it's it's really nothing. It, it, it's, a, it's a lab experiment, you know. It's not even, 
it's not even a real business yet. It's um, uh, but it, it ranks reasonably well. And so, in terms of you know what what I said earlier about having to you know, and and really a lot of these visitors aren't actually. Yeah, the, the other stats of, of interest is that um, so 80, 80, over eighty percent are brand new visitors every month. Um, but also more than three quarters um, of that traffic is is direct navigation. So um, you know. The SEO bit hasn't even come into play yet. Yeah. Um, you know, hey, John. <laughs> Estabot um, provides some um, uh, analytic information about the number of typins that a domain name gets. If I throw out a number, will you tell me if it's close? Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> Estabot, <laughs> you you won't tell me? <laughs> Should I not even ask? <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 let me hear. Yeah. Um, so Estabot uh, based it off of old data from Overture, and, and I have a tutorial on Estabot and how to interpret the results. But basically, they estimated between 100 and 200 type-ins per day. Direct navigation, people typing in stockphoto.com and going there. Uh, it, higher. You're higher. Yeah. Excellent. All <laughs> right. So let me ask you this. You um you you, you paid two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the domain name. It had various incarnations throughout the years. It was it was uh, ranked in the search engines. You realized that it would have some traffic from your compete.com analytics and discussions that you had with the previous owner. And then you launched it with a landing page, and it actually had traffic. And then you had a a certain number of months where this landing page was just collecting you know those ten thousand email subscriptions that you mentioned. Uh, and you were building out the technology. How did you determine what you would build? What would be, you know, what is currently now at stockphoto.com in terms of technology? That's a good question, Michael. Gosh, um, uh, I'll, I'll be candid. Um, I What you see now is actually um, um, pivot number one. So the original idea was actually to um, uh, put the control back in the hands of the photographer. And so effectively what I'd be doing would be um, selling disk space. So I'd be like an Amazon to them, um, but on a disk space basis. So they would say rent, you know, rent X amount of gig from me and I'll, they'll pay, you know, um, a few bucks a month sort of thing. So effectively a software as a service or a hosting solution. And I'd give them the platform and, and what I would do then is effectively, you know, um, providing traffic. And so it was up to them to convert and, you know, everything in the back end would be the same in terms of uh, their access to, to the, the site-wide Google Analytics and stuff. And, and so they, they would know exactly what's going on. But uh, I got in touch with a, a – um, well, actually, we, he got in touch with me, an uh, industry blogger by the name of Lee Torrance. He's also an Australian. He, um, he's, you know, one of the most well-read within the, the microstock um, uh, arena and happens to be in a – Australian, it happens to be in Sydney, so uh, I flew into Sydney um, for a holiday and actually caught up with him, went for, for a couple of beers and um, told him the story, and he was very, he's very polite, Lee, Lee's a, a fantastic guy, he's, he's been in the industry for years and he knows everybody, um, and I told him the idea, hey, I'm going to sort of try and sell some disk space to the photographers and we've got this amount of traffic and I laid it all bare for him and he had a look and he was very polite and he said, oh, that's, that's a very good idea, John. <laughs> and uh, and as soon as I said that, and I thought, oh man, this is not going to work, is it? So, <laughs> and so I went back, and I, uh, you know, I think I think his his point's valid. I think the the you know the bulk of the photographers out there, um, they care about their craft as they rightly should. Uh, they're not going to want to worry about taking on another sort of you know business function, uh, and so they're quite ha happy with this gallery sort of arrangement where they come. Hang up their paintings on, on my, my my gallery, and I, I promise that I'll you know market and PR enough where I'll get foot traffic in for them, and it's up to them to convert uh, based on the price. So, um, uh, so yeah, pivot number one, it seems to be going okay, but I I, I might still keep that that display this one up myself for, uh, for for you know as an option. But, did you build uh, out the technology okay. that's currently at stockphoto.com right now yourself, John, or did you hire somebody to develop it out? Well, actually, I started with the with the base script, uh, so I did a bit of research. Uh, I think we I evaluated three vendor solutions, and um, uh, I did end up hiring. Well, you know, I always had the the idea that I would hire a, a web design, web development firm to actually finish the job. So, 
um, uh, I've got the guys locally, um, uh, Band Creative, um, the guys out there, you know, Miles Burke, Laura, and Rob, uh, were very good guys. That you know, and, and so it allowed me to, I guess, keep on working, um, and everything sort of stayed the same. I basically sort of outsourced that whole function to them. And, and but what I did for them uh, was that, um, you know, being in the IT area, I sort of you know, defined the requirements, uh, prioritized it, and then um, did the functional specs and then uh, created a test plan for them. And said, okay, well, this is, you know, after you, you know, uh, fix it up and developed it, I'm going to basically run it through this sort of test script. And, you know, and really, you know, they were a joy to work with, you know, BAM, BAM.com.au, they're fantastic. Um, uh, uh, and so life just went on. And so for that six months uh, in between, well, actually, that's not true, it's about, nine months before we launched um it was a matter of you know grinding out these uh, initial um requirements having a chat to to the developers you know bam uh and then looking at analytics every day and then trying not to go crazy and try and distract yourself for, for nine months and um and you know got in touch with uh, with lee times and sort of trying to get feedback on on the product so but once we settled on people number one you know the gallery uh it was kind of simple so uh, when I was out at Sydney, I, I, I said to Lee, um, uh, you, you know, do you know anyone, uh, that any any photographers uh, that I should talk to that might be based, uh, preferably in Australia, hopefully in Perth? And he said, actually, I, I do know one. He put me in touch with Sergey. He said, uh, look, this guy I've worked with before and I, I would trust absolutely. And, uh, you know, a lovely couple. Uh, and they're actually... Uh, moving from from Russia to Perth, um, actually, as we speak. And uh, he, he sort of said, look, you know, they're a good sort of good guys to work with because from a Microsoft portfolio, they don't need you. They're, they're, they're doing very, very well without you. Um, and so they might be, you know, more flexible with you and more understanding and, and, and sort of, you know, help you along a little bit. Um, and so did the introduction and um, uh, swapped a few emails. And, and um, the, the night I got um, Sergey's commitment to say, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll, you know, uh, put on um, put on my, my portfolio for you. I just, you know, ran around like Rocky style around my lounge room, you know. And so I was very, very happy. I, I said to my wife, look, you know, we haven't got, quite got a business yet, but this, this gives us our lab experiment. Now, how many uh, pictures did Sergey Nivens contribute to stockphoto.com that made you feel like, yes, I'm going to run around now? Oh, I think within 24 hours, he started uploading about 57,000 images. Uh, wow. uh, I think his portfolio wow. is quite, quite a bit larger than, well, not quite a bit, it's a bit larger than that now, but, um, but uh, uh, yeah, he started FTP, you know, I saw that on, you know, on, on the FTP client coming through and I asked him, and then, you know, because you could sort of see on the other marketplaces where uh, he had his work, you know, uh, the kind of throughput he was getting and, um, you know, the quality of the images. Uh, he spends a lot of time. And he actually has an amazing story, um, uh, you know, coming from Russia. He's also an IT consultant that sort of switched and pivoted. And now he's, um, you know, but he's, he's got a very creative bent, and that's his background. Uh, actually fell into IT rather than the other way around. Um, and, uh, you know, he's doing very, very well. And he's he's every bit the artist now. And, uh, you know, he's finally met, completed his move to Perth and, you uh, uh, met his lovely family. You know, we see each other. You know, every couple of weeks, and um, he's actually increased uh, his portfolio since then. And um, and I think uh, he's up to over seventy five thousand wow. on stock wow. right now. So, and what kind of photographs does Sergey does? He, does he specialize in business photos or um, outdoor photos? Or you know, most photographers will do. Um, one particular thing. Does he sort of have a broad swath such that he gives stock photo a good overview of all different types of photography? I think uh, with him sort of starting late in life uh, as, as a photographer, stock photographer, he's sort of, in the initial years, he was sort of feeling his way through as well. I think he started in 08, 09. And so a lot of the stuff uh, from those years were portraiture and people and that sort of stuff. Uh, and he's moved along, taking feedback from obviously his, his sales and stuff. And uh, he's, he does a few more illustrations now. But um, I caught up with him recently, and I said, "How do you work? How do you um, come up with your ideas? How do you, you know, plan your workflow with this sort of stuff?" And he says, "Well, some, sometimes I, I look at well, obviously I, I have my own mastermind group of, of photographers that I, I catch up with, and we talk about that sort of stuff. But also I come up with my own concepts. I can be walking down the street, and I'll see something, and I'll just take a note of it, and then I'll plan around it." 
I check the analytics, uh, the search reports on, on these marketplaces, and I plan to shoot and I go through it. So you'll see, you know, if you, if you have a bit of a surf stuff further, it, you know, it's uh, it's quite a breadth. Uh, uh, but but obviously, you know, it's uh, from Russia. You're not going to find you know a lot of Asian-based images out there. But uh, yeah, it's very broad, and uh, some of the conceptual stuff is brilliant. I mean, you know, it's it's amazing. Some of the I think one of the, the I think the, one of the ballet dance ones uh, I saw Black Swan recently with Natalie Portman that stood out to me and. Um, this black swan one, he gets a ballerina to sort of, you know, pirouette and then up in the air and he's got all this, you know, the black feathers flying through. And it's a very conceptual, it's amazing. And, and people buy this, you know, obviously it's the, it's the criteria for me as a marketer, how you know it's good, it's it sells, and it sells consistently. Um, but from an artist's point of view, you look at it and go, wow, you know, as a person, I actually really like that image. Yeah. All right. So you spent uh, eight or nine months, you, you took, a, you bought a script, you had a BAM, BAM, dot com dot au customize it for you you got it up and running you you partnered with sergey who was able to load in tens of thousands of pictures so you could get up and running you had automatic traffic from your exact match domain coming in um and three days three or four days after you launch you had your first sale so how have sales been since you launched in september october time frame yeah, it's good. Um, like I said, it, it's still just a lab experiment, you know. Um, as much as you know, um, Sergey's photos uh, have helped. Uh, it's really only quite a small um, sort of inventory stock level. I mean, like you know, at the moment we're eighty, and a few, you know, hopefully in a few hours' time, eighty-five thousand uh, yeah, photos. Yeah, and, and in context, how many how many pictures does Shutterstock have, for example? I think it's something something crazy like two. Is it, Three million or two point eight million rings of bell. So but they've got millions, and you've got oh. seventy thousand, eighty thousand. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, I think that's wrong because uh, I think I got an email the other day from other Shutterstock or iStock or whatever saying that they've been onboarding about a million images a month. So that figure can't be right. It yeah, must so be much got higher. Maybe, they've probably be got a billion or something. <laughs> a lot. And so, really, you know, my eighty-five thousand or eighty thousand images really doesn't compare. And, and really, so from a sales point of view. Um, all it's doing is that it's um, it's paying for all the obviously all the commissions uh, that the photographers are due, uh, of which we have two right now, um, Sergey and Katrina Brown, uh, and um, it's paying for the web hosting costs. Um, I'm not doing any marketing, so that's zero cost there. It's paying for any sort of development and support that we have. Um, so um, at the moment, all I have is you know a very sort of basic uh, you know um, profit and loss statement. So. Um, so really, the focus for 2014 really is to is to, is to bring that up, scale that, and because um, I, I have a suspicion that it's um, it's it's directly cor correlated to uh, inventory size. But I think uh, if SEO kicks in um, and we have a critical mass of, in of images, that the recurring component would be higher. Uh, and so um, I actually think you know you know. Fingers crossed, uh, you know, uh, profitability as a percentage would actually increase. Yeah, I just looked on my cell phone. Shutterstock has over 30 million stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and videos. So they lump them all together. Um, yeah. So you're cash flow positive. You're, you're making sales. You're able to pay the, um, the, the photographers that are contributing their stock photo. And you're able to pay your ongoing bills to run the business. Um, <laughs> But I would assume that you probably paid some relatively large chunk of budget to the developers to get the website to where it is right now. Is that correct? Yeah, it was okay, but it was nowhere near two hundred fifty thousand. So um, <laughs> yeah, because it's you know like uh, the, the, from my point of view, the, the the relative priority was the marketing. So the marketing should take the focus and centerpiece, and so. The IT side, which is really my bread and butter from a professional point of view, shouldn't cost that much, and it didn't, you know. And so um, uh, we had an off-the-shelf script. Uh, it wasn't perfect, nowhere near perfect, uh, a lot of bugs. And But in terms of, you know, uh, upgrading and developing it, I mean, that, that's my bread and butter in terms of, you know, project managing a yeah. software development. Yeah. Uh, Was the uh, outside cost less than $10,000, would you say, to buy the script and have it customized? Uh, I think the, t the sum total at the end was about fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, okay. So you got two fifty yeah. in the name. You've got fifteen in the development, and you're up and running, and you're making sales right now. Yeah. Um, so twenty fourteen, you're targeting bringing on more photographers, 
having more search engine optimized images and pages, bringing in more traffic, um, and doing that without having to spend an enormous marketing budget, which Shutterstock and iStock Photo have to do because they're using brandable domain names. So they need to rely on, you know, search engine optimization and paid advertising, which they are paying a lot of money for. Yeah, I, I, you know, Shutterstock and uh, iStock and Portolia and Dreamstime, all these, you know, great marketplaces um, are, are fantastic. But uh, unless you're in the game, so you're a web designer, always going to these sites, you've, you know, not only bookmarked, but you've got it, you know, in terms of your, your you know, it's, it's top of mind in terms of your, your, your recollection, your, your branding and stuff. Um, you know, they'll always have that advantage uh, in terms of momentum. Uh, for a new guy like me coming on, I'm reliant on, at the moment, picking up the guys that don't go to Shutterstock and Dreams Time and all these guys consistently. So they'll either, you know, type in, you know, the, the generic search phrase and then, you know, the search results come up or take a punt, just type in the generic domain. And so cars.com or business.com or something like that, you'll always have a percentage. What surprised me, I guess, was the... Um, you know, given that it was a developed site, that you know, over the over over eighty percent, over three quarters of it was um, was was direct navigation, and, and, uh, and that's good. That's a great option to have, um, you know, as a as a startup, because no matter how badly you you present, you know, your, your products, or no matter how bad your conversion or your you know uh, path to to checkout is, you can always get another chance next month with. With you know new traffic and new visitors, so so um, I'm, I'm hoping that that you know we can rely on it, and and I think you know having that that option is, is fantastic. You know how you get a chance to reinvent yourself, you know every month uh, if something goes wrong, and so you'll always have visitors passing your shop front. It's a matter of can you get them inside, and can you you know show them the right goods that that might fit their their requirement. And, and you know obviously yeah. it's priced the same way. It's I hate to say it's it's a bit of a commoditized product because the same image exists in other marketplaces around the web, very accessible as well. So, so at this stage, um, you know, my, my, I'm hoping that on a per image basis, at least um, my, my marketing costs are a little bit lower than, than say something like a Hotel or a Dreamstime or a Shutterstock. So that's the, that's, the, that's the premise, that's the hypothesis. We'll see how it works out. So you've been running this business uh, from the point that you purchased the domain name to today. It's been about a year. You know, most of it has been developing the website and getting it up and running and, you know, migrating through your, your uh, business model. Is running your own business what you expected? Easier? Harder? Oh, it's great. You know, like, um, you know, I love my work um, outside of stuff photo, but um, I find, you know, getting out of bed so much easier. I just can't wait to... For example, if I've reached out to someone, you know, when I got that email from you, I nearly fell off my bed, fell off my chair, um, because uh, I know dementia, but not, not a, you know, maybe some of the, my, my my colleagues wouldn't. But um, and so I just can't wait to see what else happens. I remember listening to um, to you know, the you know, Monty Khan podcast. I remember when Brian Null came on, and he had uh, I think it was OfficeSupply.com, and um, he said, and then I think he went to golf courses or something com, and I remember him saying that um, that. Uh, it, it opened doors for him that he didn't expect that it would, you know, or didn't know that were there. And so, um, for me at the moment, you know, sure, it's it's a little bit of a heartache when you you know have to go through that that prospecting and cold calling and that sort of stuff. But it, um, some days it it seems uh, more easier than what you expect. And and um, you know to you know we launched in September and here we are in January. I'm on Domain Sherpa. Who would have believed that? You know, um, we, we managed to get up to. Um, uh, you know, the Australian Financial Review, which is like the local um, version of Wall Street Journal. So I'm amazed that's even happened, you know, uh, and that came about through Flipper because people were having a feature written on them and, and um, all, all this sort of stuff's happened. And and, uh, and the best thing is the photographers would know any different. All it means is that traffic gets um, another traffic source. And, uh, and but for me, it's it's great. It's uh, just a little experiment, um, and and you just keep rolling on. You get you set a set of you know tests or resolutions for this month and next month, and you just sort of cycle through them, and and uh, hopefully it all sort of hangs together or makes sense some way, and uh, you don't make too many mistakes. And the mistakes you make, you can recover from. But you know, I, I've enjoyed the journey because uh, um, I think, like as my wife said, it shouldn't be the only thing you focus on. It's just another pillar in your life, and and. Uh, as far as this pool is going, it's, it's going very well at the moment. You know, I'm sure the ups and downs, but I really I love it. I love getting up every day and checking my analytics and 
you know, read my emails. You know, I'm, I'm using Facebook as, as our blog, and, and so I get these, you know, friend requests. I'm not aware I come from, and I love going on. Um, there's a particular thread I love following on uh, on on Warrior Forum. I don't know whether you found that one in the search, um, where um, you know, I love the debate as to you know, this guy's an idiot, or no, you know, he could he could make his money back. I love it. You know, it's great because who knows? I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, it's it's you know I love to see how it sort of unfolds. It's uh, it's an experiment by experiment by experiment basis, and um, uh, and hopefully you know well I, I have no great sort of grandiose aspirations of of doing a big IPO and doing that sort of stuff. I just want something you know cool you know um, and I can sort of sort of reflect back on and say yeah I did that. Yeah, are you um you know in I remember when when I had quit my day job and I was working on my prior business full time and I felt the same way as you I would wake up in the morning I was energized I'd you know uh, have breakfast with the kids I'd work long hours I'd have dinner with the kids I'd put my wife to bed and then I'd go and work another four hours and I was doing some coding and I would do customer service for the people that were overseas and do you find that you're working a lot of hours as well especially because you have your day job but and and it's going into the evening hours as well uh, no, I, I'm not allowed to. So uh, it's actually pretty good because, um, like, uh, it's kind of set because you have your, your day job, and that's very good because you have your own sort of uh, network there, and they don't talk anything about web and stock photos, and so it gives me a nice break. Um, I go home, I, have, I you know try and get home early. We you know uh, have dinner with the kids, we hang around, we read, and you know have your chores and stuff and then we'll, you know, clown around with the kids and then 8 p.m. they're off to bed and then I have a bit of a quick chat to the wife and then usually she says, oh, I've had enough talking to you. I'm going to get my iPad and go to bed. And, um, and so when she goes, I'll, I'll just go and, you know, do a few things. At this point in time, I'm, I'm reaching out to, to uh, selected photographers and, and sort of onboarding a few. So, but so really, from a time point of view, nothing has really changed. Um, it's just another way of, um, it, it's just another focus point. So uh, life's, life's very good. You know, I, I hope I don't change it you know, with stock photos. So it's just another pillar. So here's the last question for you, John. Knowing what you know now, if you could go back in time 12 months, would you buy the domain name again? What would you do differently the second time in, in the first year that you've spent? Uh I haven't made a lot of mistakes yet because I haven't really sort of tried too many things. I think the um, the experimentation with the disk based thing was was probably a little wasteful, um, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, it wasn't too bad. If I had to do it all, I'd do exactly the same. I'm I'm very happy. Um, uh, you know, I'm completely expecting you know a big sort of bust up somewhere along the line, and I'm and I'm okay with that. You know, it's um. um just got to get up and dust yourself off and keep going um, because, you know, who else is going to do it? You know, um, as much as supportive as my wife is and the friends are, like, you only have yourself to rely on and and, um, and, and that's fine, you know. And with, you know, a network, for example, like yourself and, and, and guys around the place, uh, and, and, you know, Sergey and, and Katrina Brown, um, you know, we just get together, Skype, have a chat and just push on, I think. So uh, exactly the same. Excellent. If you have additional questions, please post them in the comment section below the video, and I'll ask John to come back and answer as many as he can. This is the point in the conversation where I ask the audience to post a comment and say thank you to you, John. You know, you've, you've spent your time, you've spent your energy, a year's worth of knowledge gained. That's hard knowledge gained. It costs a lot of money to even spend your time gaining that knowledge, and we appreciate you coming on here and doing that. So, you know, what I like to do is ask the audience to take just a moment, if you've enjoyed this, if you've learned something from John, post a comment and say thank you. Um, if someone wants to work with you, John, maybe they're um, a professional photographer who's also a domainer, or maybe they just are an amateur photographer, photographer, but they have some images. What's the best way that they can contact you and, and see if they might be able to partner with you and work with you? Yep, just, the, uh, just the contact form on the, um, on the website uh, is fine. Um, um, actually, just on that other point, Michael, I, and I really appreciate your invitation to come on Domain Sherpa, but uh, I feel like a bit of a fraud because in your, in your, in your opening statement, it says, uh, you know, we like to get all these experts. Um, I'm not an expert, but, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a beginner marketer. I'm just building my way through, and and, um, and so I'm very appreciative. It's, uh, you know, it's very humbling. And so um, 
I love the debate around a place. Uh, I, I don't know. At the moment, I'm, I've taken a bit. And uh, I think the attraction for some some of your viewers and some of the guys on, say, Warrior Forum, it's, it's like uh, the attraction of watching someone uh, make themselves a complete idiot on the web. <laughs> and I'm more than pleased to provide that entertainment. <laughs> well, I appreciate you saying that you feel like a fraud, but you're not a fraud, John. You are an entrepreneur. You've put your money where your mouth is, literally. You have, uh, and you didn't just buy something and you tried something in silence or off in the corner. You have proactively gone out. You've posted a blog on Flippa. You've been highlighted in other press. I've brought you on here. Yeah, you may not have returned the entire investment yet. You may not have recouped your, uh, your initial investment in the development and the domain name, but the fact is that you own a high value domain name going forward and and uh, you now have the opportunity that only one person in the entire world has for stockphoto.com to learn from. And, you know, I get the impression that you're a lifelong learner and you are enjoying the, the journey. And, uh, and you know, it, and it's going to be a fun journey to watch. And I hope a year from now you, uh, you come back on the show and share some of your lessons learned from the prior year. I love that. Thank you. That would be phenomenal. So, and I also want to encourage the audience that next time you need a stock photo for your website, go over to stockphoto.com, do a search for what you're looking for, man with computer, you know, uh, online service, whatever you need, just go over to stockphoto.com and do a search. Um, John has been gracious enough to come here and spend his time. The least we can do is go do a search and find if one of the uh, stock photos is available over at his site. John Yao, founder of stockphoto.com. Thank you for coming on Domain Sherpa, sharing your knowledge about exact match domain names and building a, a business from the ground up. And thanks for being a Domain Sherpa. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.